So you want to become a veterinarian. Hi guys, Sunshine Squirrel here. I hope that you all are having a fantastic week. I'm here for another fun and exciting video and today we are talking all about the process of becoming a veterinarian. Uh, this is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart as I have, I wanted to become a veterinarian since I was five years old and Hey guys, sorry, correction. So I graduated from veterinary school in May, but I made this video when I was still in veterinary school. So the so. first thing about becoming a veterinarian is just like with any professional school, medical school, dental school, law school, uh, you're going to need to get an education. Um, and what I mean by get an education is that you are going to have to go to school beyond just your, beyond just an undergraduate degree level. So you're going to go to something that's known as professional school, so law school, med school, dental school. You're going to go to veterinary school. Um, veterinary school is a four-year program. Um, it generally consists of three years of academic work, so when you're in the classroom and learning and then the final year is your clinical year and this is when you're going to work at the veterinary hospital that your school runs and you're going to basically apply all of the knowledge that you learned in the classroom to the real life clinical setting. Uh, in between your junior and senior year of veterinary school and your senior year uh, many students do what is called an externship and that's when you get to go out and work in veterinary practices and once again like clinics get to apply what you've learned get to make connections uh, with future employers or future opportunities for internships and residencies now something that i want to say just off top for to be a veterinarian you do not need to do an internship or residency when you graduate if you do an internship or residency Normally, it's because you want to specialize in a particular area within veterinary medicine, such as cardiology, dermatology. Uh, but if you just want, but if you want to go into general practice, you do not need to do an internship or residency. That being said, they're all general practitioners that have done an internship and residency to improve and sharpen their skills. And it's also something that you can do later on in your career as a veterinarian. If you start off in general practice and you want to go into an internship or residency to specialize in something later on, the opportunity is open for you. One of the things that I love about the veterinary profession is that there are so many different avenues that you can do. You can go into general practice as being a small animal or a large animal vet. You can be a farm diet food industries and help with formulating diets. You can be a spokesman for different medical supply companies. There are so many different routes that you can take and there are so many opportunities with even if you start down one like certain career path you can always change it later. It's awesome. So I would say probably the hardest part of becoming a veterinarian is getting into veterinary school. Uh, getting into veterinary school, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it is a very difficult process, and some people have even said that it's even harder than getting into med school. And why is that? There are so few accredited veterinary schools. Uh, to get into you and most veterinary school classes are fairly small only about 100 to 120 130 students and if any given application year I think around 5,000 or to 6,000 students apply and if there's only at the most I think at the most I could be wrong on this guys but I think there's only about 30 veterinary schools it's not gonna leave seats for everyone. So what does it take to get into veterinary school? Well, basically for veterinary school, there are different categories and different requirements that you have to complete, and then there are different things make there are different things that make you more competitive on your application. Now, all veterinary schools are gonna have a certain list of prerequisite coursework that they wanna see you complete prior to joining them. So for most schools, this is gonna consist of biology one and two, chemistry one and two, organic chemistry one and two, biochemistry, physics one and two, as well as some additional classes such as writing classes. Uh, so a couple schools like to see psychology and things like that. And even some schools like the addition of animal science and animal nutrition. Now, when completing this coursework, most schools will only accept a C or better. Some schools only want your upper level science courses to be completed at a four-year institution. Now, my number one advice to you with applying to veterinary school 
is go to the specific school's website that you want to get in because every school is different and every school is going to have a list of things that they want or that they don't want. So to save yourself time, money, and potentially tears later on, make sure that you do your homework and you have completed all the requirements that the school wants to see. Now, if you are waitlisted when you apply to veterinary school, uh, this basically means that if someone who was extended an interview off, who was extended an acceptance offer decides that they don't want to go to that particular vet school or they want to go to another school, if they say no, then if you're high enough on the waitlist, then you can get in. But being waitlisted does not necessarily mean a no, and it does not necessarily mean a yes that you will be attending veterinary school in the fall. Now the thing about veterinary school that is kind of sad is basically that it's a one year application cycle. So if you don't get in for the current year that you apply for, you have to apply again for the following year. Um, it's not like an undergrad where you can start in the fall, you can apply um, in the fall and if you don't get in the fall, you can apply to be accepted in the spring. It's either you get in the fall or you don't. Um, now something that I do want to mention and that I forgot to mention about prerequisite coursework is that you do not have to have an undergraduate degree to go to veterinary school. All you have to do is complete the required prerequisites. Now if I would encourage you though if you can financially get your undergraduate degree. I would encourage you to. Um, I think it's great to have a backup plan if things don't work out with veterinary school, or if after you finish veterinary, after you are a veterinarian for a couple years, um, if you want to retire and move on to something else. I think it's great to have um, a backup plan. And most vet schools, the amount of prerequisite credits that you're going to complete is anywhere from 80 to 90. And most undergraduate degree programs are around 120. And so it kind of just makes sense just to get your degree. You know, you've worked so hard up to that point, just finish it. And while we're talking about undergraduate degrees, there is no major that is given preference in veterinary school selection. So you can major, major in music or biology or whatever. I majored in biology just because I really like biology. It was my favorite subject in high school. And I also like the fact that a lot of the prerequisites that I had to complete for my veterinary school were covered in my undergraduate, my under, my undergraduate uh, were covered by the biology major. So basically, you're going to let the veterinary schools know what you have accomplished by submitting an application. This application is going to be, is is coordinated by the American Veterinary Medical Association on a website known as Vimcast. At Vimcast, you're basically going to fill out a standard application. This is where you're going to submit your essay, your um, transcripts, you're going to talk about your pre-vet experience, so extracurricular activities, veterinary experience, animal experience, research experience, and then Vimcast is going to submit that application to the different veterinary schools that you tell them that you want them to send that to. Now there's a flat rate that you pay for Vimcast and then each application that you have sent out is going to cost an additional, when I applied, I think it was like $100 per school. Now the one thing I want to let you guys know though is that some veterinary schools have supplemental applications and paperwork that they want you to submit on top of the VIMCAST. So it's really, really important that once again you go to that veterinary school's website that you want to go to and you look up to see if they have an additional application that you submit to that vet school outside of VIMCAST. The VIMCAST is also the location where your letters of recommendation will be submitted by those individuals who you ask to write them. So basically, the VIMCAST application, I can't remember, honestly, guys, when it's due. I believe it's either due in September or the 1st of October. And then after that, you'll start to hear back from veterinary schools at different times based upon how your veterinary school that you're interested in handles the admissions process. And then some veterinary schools have an interview, some of them don't. So for some vet schools, you know, it just, it just depends. Um, you'll generally then 
hear back, um, then you'll hear back, like I said, and then every student who has applied to veterinary school has, and that gets accepted into the program, has to submit an official letter of confirmation of where they're going by April. When I applied, I think it was April 15th or 16th, every year, I'm, sh I'm not sure if it's still that same date, but normally it's in April where you have to to decide where you're going to go um, if you get into more than one school and even if you don't you still have to officially confirm by that point. Now after you've gotten into veterinary school during your fourth year you will complete your licensing exam. Uh, this is basically known as the National American Veterinary uh, licensing exam or the NAVLE. Uh, basically, every state you're going to take, you're going to apply to take the NAVLE, which was which, which in whichever state that you want to practice veterinary medicine. I hope that you guys found this video helpful and that it was able to answer some questions that you may have about becoming a veterinarian and what's all involved in the process. If I left you more confused than you were before, <laughs> please let me know. If you have any questions at all also please let me know. If you like this video, please make sure to leave a big thumbs up and subscribe for more. And as always guys, have a wonderful week. Bye.